<laughs> my, my name is Donald Campbell. Um, we are recording this for, for future use um, for many, many reasons. So um, some time ago, I happened to meet um, Nicholas online. Um, won't go into details how that was, but it's been fantastic to actually meet up with Nicholas. And um, out of that has come this. So I'd like to hand over to Nicholas now to say a few words. All right, thank you very thank much, you Donald. Much. And Good. thank you. Thank you to Mr. Mr. Haynes Cyril and to Ms. You know, Woodstock Riley and Margaret, of course. And of course, Mr. Jarrett there. We are so delighted Good. that you all have joined us this morning. Uh, we hope just to have a, an exchange to, to, for you guys to speak a little more about yourselves so that we can use this uh, engagement to further raise awareness about our Caribbean vets, our veterans of World War II, and how much our way of life is owed to you all and the sacrifices you made. So thank you again. Thank you for signing the logbook. Thank you for being here. And I hand back to you, Donald, and you will take us through. Great. Yes, thank you. Yes, hi, good morning. Good or morning to you. Good, yeah. good afternoon. Say yeah. hi, Mom. Hi. <laughs> yeah, great, great. So we, I think we all got to wave, wave at this wonderful lady. <laughs> Fantastic to have you on board. Would you like to say something about yourself to everybody? You want you to say something? Oh. <clears throat> the only thing I say is I welcome that being in the same group. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if you heard her. She said she welcomes being in the same group. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> group. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. We, we, we are in honor. Uh -huh. Of you, ma'am. I thank you. <laughs> and, and just to clarify, she's calling more Woodstock. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Woodstock Riley. Oh, so, yeah, okay. A lot, a lot of names. Okay, fantastic. Um, she was she was calling more when she was in the war. Oh. And, and then married Woodstock. Yeah. A okay. thousand pardons. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're quite right. Quite right. Okay. My okay. mistake. Thank you. That, this it is has a, been a pleasure. This is a brief introduction, and I'm going to go through to everybody else. And the next person I'm going to ask to introduce is um, Mr. Mr. Haynes. Hey. A few words, Mr. Haynes. Introduce yourself and give a little. Well, my name is Haynes Martin Louis Cyril. Okay. Well, I wouldn't go through. I will start. When I knew myself to be Hain Cyril, I was a, first of all, some of you will remember we had something they called a scouting movement, good guys and different things like that. The humble servant at the age of 15 was in one of the worst disaster we ever had in St. Lucia, Wavin Poisson disaster. I was a scout then. I took part in the disaster. Seven of us went there, we have been passed on to save lives. And that was the worst disaster. We didn't have a, a book about it. And from this scout, I learned quite a lot. First aid, signaling, and everything. When the war broke out, I was a scout. St. Lucia was threatened to be bombed by the Germans if we stop, if we don't, don't stop supporting England and the United Nations. As a result, they selected some of the scouts. I was included to give assistance to the police. We were responsible to tell, to go through the entire colony to let the people know they must put off their lights after nine o'clock, so that 10 o'clock, no lights will be seen on the island. Well, it was tough for us in the start, but about a, a month's time, the people themselves used to help us because it was not easy to put off the lights. So at, at 10 o'clock, they should have no lights at all on the island. And from there, St. Lucia 
was torpedoed in 1942. St. Lucia was torpedoed by the Germans submarine. And we had the that boat, um, Tata and the Nelson, those boats used to carry goods and all about throughout the um, Caribbean, supported by the by Canada. Well, it so happened the bigger nations like Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana at the time, it was British Guyana, and but even little Barbados, they had a defense force, but the, the Windward Island didn't have any. And the Windward Island that was St. Lucia, that was Dominica, St. Vincent, and Grenada. As a result of that, they decided to put what you call a battalion with men from the different islands. And they chose St. Lucia as headquarters because we had these barracks there, the old barracks. So we had what you call a Windward Island Battalion. But all the other islands, they had what the defense force. And we were the only ones that didn't have a defense force. We all were heard about the torpedo of the Antarctic and the Nelson. That was a, a, a great um, loss for us. So when they decided to form the Caribbean Regiment, we received training from men from the 8th Army for the Windward Islands and we formed a battalion and joined the Caribbean Regiment for training in North Africa. Well, we pick up um, troops from Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, um, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, and we got all the other islands in the Caribbean to join. Mr. Cyril? To North Africa. Mr. Cyril? Not, hello. Hi, can I stop you for one minute? Yes. Because we want, we want to hear, this is an amazing story, especially the part about when you went over to Italy and we want to hear the rest of it. But uh -huh. we just want to pause here for a little minute so that we can get a little introduction from Mr. Jarrett. And then right. we'll come back to everybody for the details of, of their further service, okay? But hold on to Thank that you. because we really want to hear that part of it. Thank All you. right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, Nicholas. What, what, what would be also very interesting if you say, if you don't mind telling us your age, <laughs> okay? Well, so well, we, I wouldn't. Right. So I we we, we I'm, afraid, to, I'm afraid to say so. You're afraid That's to why say I'm so. telling you before, before I start with my age, I must praise the Supreme Being for the different risk I've All had right. in my life. All right, great. And we'll to come back. reach the age, to reach the age of 99 years. Brilliant, excellent. Thank you very much for that. We'll come back and hear more from you later. And I believe we, we spoke to, 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 to Ina, and uh, Ina was asking, how old are you? Uh -huh. How old? I don't know. What, 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 She's 103. Thank you very, very much for that. <laughs> okay, so I would like now to go to Mr. Jarrett, so Mr. Jarrett to introduce and tell us something about himself, including the force he was in. Over to you, Mr. Jarrett. Oh, sorry, before we go, Ina was also in the Girl Guides. Oh, was she? Excellent. Uh, and the Rangers, so listening to Mr. Haynes, there's a common thread there. Yes, we'll come back and hear more later, hopefully. Thank you. Mr. Jarrett. Done. I think it's I think it's just as pleasurable as when I was a 19 year old. <laughs> to be among people of my head, people like Ina and this gentleman, I think it is wonderful done. I feel I, I felt so great. 
thank you for this organization that putting us together like this done. And let me tell you, I wish I was a bit nearer to many of you, not just looking at your face on my screen, but if I was putting my hand on your shoulder, and that would be one of my great satisfactions. Still, it's not too late. At 97, I had a letter. I still look forward to be seeing more of people of my age. And I'm so pleased today to be talking to, to you and the others. And we hope that something good come from it. You understand me? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And I, I do enjoy this day. Ina, I think you was a, I think you was a beauty when you was a 19 year old. I, I, I still got my eyes on you at 97. <laughs> you were a beauty, he said. I beg your pardon? She's still a beauty. <laughs> I think she's wonderful. Yeah. Look at her. She's <laughs> wonderful. Mr. Jarrett, can you tell us a little bit before we move on to about what which force you were in and when you joined? I was in, um, 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 19 Division, Royal Air Force. Um, 1942. The thing about it, when this war started, I was in school, and when the war finished, I was in uniform. Because uh, I could remember, um, we used to get uh, in school. We used to get report every day what what was take what was taking place and how the where the German what the German would do, and then all all our thinkable. I find my the years go by a few years pass, and then during a few years to pass, what I found myself in uniform with a rifle on my shoulder, defending the empire and my and my country as well and i i think that um there's no um i find pleasure in it to be frank um there is nothing to regret about my time in the royal air force um it and it give a lot of enlightenment a lot of enlightenment to my youthful days because don't forget when i joined the royal air force I was just 17 actually. And I was I was doing well in school. And not in that, um, I was a little bit wayward. And I, I was, my father was about to take me and keep me in Panama. You know, my dad was a deep water engineer. And when and because when I joined this, follow my friend and went to the, the recruiting station and when they accept me, and when I took the test and they accept me in the year, I feel so great. I said, my father won't be able to put this on me anymore because he wanted it. Ah, that's great, that's great, Mr. J. Listen, can we pause it just there? And everybody will come back and to tell us a little bit more about their, their stories. What I would like to say at this moment in time is to say to say big thank you for, to Nicholas for introducing the whole um, journey that we're on at the moment in terms of um, his father's logbook. And that really is the common thread as to why we're here now. So if I, if I just get Nicholas to say something about his father's logbook, and then we can come back to Ina to tell us a bit more about her journey. Yes, go on. Over to Nicholas. A bit frozen, I think you are, Nicholas. You're frozen? Oh, okay, oh, okay, sorry. Okay. Am I... Yeah, you're back. Hearing me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good. So, thank you, Donald. Uh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you again. And just quickly to say that my father was born in St. Lucia, 1920. So he would be a hundred and he would be coming up to his hundred and first birthday if he was still alive. I'm the last of ten of his kids. Um, in 1943, he left. Uh, Trinidad, where he was working for the time at uh, Barclays Bank, and he went up to Canada and joined the Canadian Air Force and trained and qualified as a fighter pilot. He then deployed over to England, but thankfully for me, uh, it was late in the day and the war was wrapping up. Um, and so he never actually deployed into the European theater. Uh, that was in May. And then he then transferred over to the fleet air arm and began training to fly Spitfires uh, to, to, for, in preparation for the invasion of Japan. 
And uh, that too came to a close, an abrupt close with the, with the dropping of the atomic bombs in August. And so he never actually saw any physical combat, but he was a fully fledged uh, qualified fighter pilot. And he served his time out through 1946, returned back to Trinidad, met my mom, married, had, had me among other things and my, my nine siblings. And I've always had an interest in World War II and the great sacrifice that persons like my father and all the people here today have made. Uh, Mr. Cyril, Mrs. Collymore Woodstock, Sir Jarrett, and yourself, Donald. You have you have a distinguished record of service yourself um, as, as a, in the UK uh, Air Force. And so, persons like you, you know, we owe such a humongous debt of gratitude to all of you for your for your tremendous example for your and your service. And West Indians. By and large, uh, I don't think that really registers on our national psyche. You know, when, you, when people think of the Caribbean, they think about Mali, they think of Carnival in Trinidad, they think of beaches and sun and fun, but they don't really appreciate the sacrifice that so many men and women readily made in the defense against tyranny. And so a few years ago, I came across my dad's logbook. Well, I always knew he had it. And I suddenly thought, wow, if I could get a couple signatures from persons like yourself, into this document, what a wonderful tribute it would be to recognize them. And so everyone on this call has graciously signed a book or a page from it. Um, and, and then I met you, as, as you say, and, and you have a wonderful initiative to, to develop a monument in, in the UK at the National Arboretum. And I'll let you, I won't steal your thunder, I'll let you speak to that, Donald. Okay. Um, and you asked that we bring these folks together for a little face-to-face -face and exchange. And I just think it's such a wonderful um, opportunities. So thank you again. And, uh, you know, I look forward to hearing everybody else's story today. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Nicholas. And as uh, Nicholas said, um, I spent 36 years in the Royal Air Force, and I think you probably saw that in a brief that was sent out. If you didn't, yes, yes I, I, I was an engineer in the Royal Air Force. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But, but here's the thing. I was born in Jamaica, came across to England when I was six, um, 13 and finished my schooling here. Now, I just wanted to join the military. And guess what? I thought that I was one of the first black person to join the military. Because in school, they never taught us anything about you, you gentlemen and ladies who have gone before us and does just wonderful paving the way for us. Yeah? So what I'm saying is the history of what you guys have done before us, myself and others, is still yet to be told. So uh, we, we plan to put up a monument in the National Memorial Arboretum here in Staffordshire in UK for recognition of your service and others, and indeed the present people who are serving and people who are gonna serve in the future. Now this has got to be done. And that's why we're now going around and trying to get the stories of the likes of all of us that are here. Um, and such wonderful initiative of the project of the logbook is really giving a lot of good grounds to gather that sort of interest and to record it. Because what we, were not very, we haven't done very well, in my opinion, anyway, is record what we have done as people and make it be known to everybody in the world. So. Thank you very much for coming together. And what we'd like to do now is actually go back to Ina and get her to tell us a little bit more about herself, a bit a girl guide, and, and when she joined, I believe, the army and all that. She was a girl guide and uh, part of the St. John's Ambulance and YWCA. When they asked for a woman, they were recruiting women to come over to England. And so she was there for a in the very first group of women to leave Jamaica, and I believe that would have been the first group of women from the Caribbean to go to England. She was then 24, 20, 25, um, and she came over in 1943, and they put the group of women to, to type. They put them in an office, and she very famously wrote to the war office and said she hadn't come all this way from Jamaica to type and she <laughs> wanted to see some action. And they therefore gave her some tests 
and she was selected to be a radar operator. And she then was sent over to Belgium. Wow. And she operated in Belgium as a radar operator. Wow. And then returned to the UK. I think she was in the UK at the end of the war. Okay. Um, no and was allowed to, um, well, part of the effort was that you could go to oh. university. Yeah. And she then studied and became a barrister. Wow. While she was in the UK. So she's lived a life of many firsts. Um, and I, I certainly commend you and Nicholas for what you're doing because as you said, sure I, I think we sort of took it for granted and the actual exceptional um, work that they've done hasn't really been recognized or their stories told. And I, I think we've been delinquent on that. So, so thank you to you both for doing that. It, it is inspiring, it says a lot for what they did in the 1940s on, on many levels, uh, gender, racial, et cetera. But she always speaks very highly of her time in the war and the, the friends that she made and that she continued with. She made friends with certainly a lot of people living in Scotland, a lot of the English uh, and her, her lifelong Jamaican friends as well. So I think that's a, a summary of what she did. You enjoyed your time in the war, right, Mom? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely excellent. Really, That's thank wonderful you. Wonderful mother they got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent summary. Thank you so much. And may I say, if you've got links to any other um, veterans that uh, that she 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 signed up with, um, that'd be great to make contact with them as well. What a wonderful story. I think we should give Ina a round of applause for um, you know. Such a fantastic journey and still yeah. here to share it with us. Absolutely yeah. superb. Can I say that ever since we started this project, we hankered after getting a female veteran on board. So she's the first and only one so yeah. far that we've had. So you are extra special. <laughs> She's actually how this round started is that we were contacted by someone in the UK and they were researching for female veterans and, and they're saying that she's the eldest um, living veteran, female veteran. And this is what the Women's Veterans Organization has said. So you may have seen some articles about her in the newspaper. Yes. That's, that's how that came about because they contacted us. And I think Nicholas probably saw that um, that publicity, and and we've gone from there. So she is apparently the oldest female. Unfortunately, all her friends that we know, as I mentioned, Norma Wint, right. who was, um, was also in the in the war with her. But again, most of them actually chose to stay in the office and thought Mom was quite mad to want to do more. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but she, she was, she's always, yes, a, a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I was always looking for action. So off, off she went to Belgium and very interestingly, she, she didn't speak very much about it. Apart wow. from the fact that she was, um, you know, we know that she was a radar operator. Fantastic. Can I say that you spoke about women's organization? Can you, can you unmute? Can you unmute? You spoke yeah. about women's organization. If we can have some sort of link to that, because there might be other female veterans that we could um, link to yes, as well. Yes, it's called the Women's Royal Army Corps Association. All right, we'll... we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll and we'll, they, uh, they, they undertook looking for the oldest, the nation's oldest veteran. Okay. And okay. They're, they're the ones who contacted us. Okay, we can make link on email um yes. re reference that okay so thank you so much for that now we've kept um mr haynes waiting for quite some time now so we're going to try and come back to mr haynes and hopefully he's still on fire re rearing to tell his story mr haynes can you unmute please yeah let me see if i get i get his daughter to unmute him once yeah okay. she's, done, she's done it yes is here it's a pity I came out probably, I started too, too rough. 
No, 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 Mr. Haynes. Huh? No, no, not, not at all. Listen, okay, so I, if you could, Mr. Haynes, could you pick up your story when they came and they asked you all to write your will? And the next thing you know, you were on a truck headed over, you know, being taken to the port and going overseas. Yeah. So tell us, tell us from there all the way into Italy and then into Egypt. Well, when the, 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 um, the regiment for St. Lucia was selected, where, well, at that time, as I told you before, I was in the cinema and then I was picked up from there. I was in uniform, so I had to collect my baggages and so on at my home and back to headquarters, from headquarters, we left early in the morning, two trucks and so on, destination unknown. However, we went to Viewport and we pick up what you call a troop ship and left the view fort, destination unknown. We landed in Trinidad and Tobago and we, we had to camp there. And the next day we, we left, no, that two days after, we had a little exercise and we left to unknown destination. We went to Jamaica and pick up some troops well, we had two companies from Trinidad, along with our company from St. Lucia. And we went to Jamaica. And we had what we call a reception there. We were welcome there. We had a parade and so on. And next day we pick up water and, and the Jamaicans to a known, known destination, but however, we landed in Norfolk, Virginia. We met some troops there as well. And then we, we stayed there for uh, hours and pick up troops and proceeded to a known destination, but we landed at Norfolk, Virginia. In Virginia, we landed. And we took tra trains and so on to take up to the, to, the, to the training center. And in Norfolk, Virginia, we started training there for the war. And that was the first, not live brown ammunition because we had that in St. Russia. But we had about two exercises and then we put separate the troops. Well, St. Lucian joined to the, the, with the um, Guyanese and we formed what you call a company. And when they passed the final exams, they asked everybody to have their book and so on, to write the last will and so on and so on and so on. Well, we knew we, we, those who selected were in for it. We left. And we signed our last will and so on. And uh, about, uh, it, it was not two days after, they called upon us, get dressed, to move, not knowing our destination. At that time, we had already signed our last will and testament and everything. We boarded a troop ship and went to the to an unknown destination. We were traveling the Atlantic Ocean, a number of ships join us from different positions, different sections and so on joining us. When we traveled for about 
six or seven hours or eight hours a day, we had a number of troops going to war. But we were fortunate, we were, were either fortunate or unfortunate. We were attacked by the Germans, submarines, and ships start blowing. That means when they got hit, they probably would blow. And all the troop ships start covering from different directions. And we were fortunate. We went through the Gibraltar and find ourselves in the Mediterranean along with some ships, but ships scattered from north, east, and west. And we landed in, in um, Italy. As we landed there, we had to land from ship to ship to get to shore. That place was in a mess. Nevertheless, we come out of Vesuvius, just like so far what we have there. But they knew their business. We left the place there, we, we dug in in the same sulfur to cover from fire. However, in the night, we had to move to an unknown destination. And it's a good thing we moved because the Germans knew that we were there and they started bombing, but we didn't experience that. We had time to leave at reach at the camp they prepared for us. And that's where we were. Then we were told we were waiting on the 64 garrison and the Welsh regiment to form a brigade in order to assist the troops we went into Germany for invasions. So we were going there for backup support, just waiting. When the time came there, it was not long, it's only about two or three days. They just will tell you get dressed and so on and to move. And when we were about moving, they said we had to wait on the 64 garrison. I believe that, that's what saved us though, 64 garrison, because we couldn't go there alone. However, it's a good thing they told us the troops that went into Germany did the job. So there's no need for us to join them. All we will have to do is to escort some German prisoners. However, we were in time, and the Caribbean regiment was only 1,200 feet. And we had to uh, uh, escort 4,000 German prisoners. So you could imagine. Well, we had no problem. We escorted these prisoners. And I can say so. The Germans are very well disciplined troops, three of us. I was the corporal in charge, was supposed to be responsible for 30. And we had no problem whatsoever. And we were only separated by a barbed wire. They could see everything about us. We could see everything. We, not a day we had to tell them anything. Waking up in the mornings at 5.30, clean the place and get ready for seven. 6.30 to 7, fall in, no problem whatsoever. Well, we spent some time traveling, went through the Mediterranean, from the Mediterranean, we went down to, to um, Egypt, and we passed through this place there, and we took these troops right through to Egypt, to Egypt camp. Uh, when we thought we were finished, no, they came for us and we get to a camp in the same Egypt and we were prepared. In fact, we were fortunate, I must say so here. We were fortunate 
Because I said before, we had our training from the men from the Eighth Army in St. Lucia. And those were the type of training we would meet. Four of us, corporals and sergeant, were asked to join the training depot. But I was fortunate because I was down for a PT course in Timshire. Well, I said, well, I was out of it because we were getting ready to go to Japan. But I spent a week in Timshire. But when I returned, a corporal told me, Mr. Cyril, watch, go at the notice board and see if your name is there. And your humble servant name was there, along with four other corporals from St. Lucia on that course. But we were fortunate, the same training we had in St. Lucia for baptism of fire, it is the same training we received. And St. Lucia, we were right on top. But the commanding officer and some other officers didn't have so much confidence in us because we were the last set of troops to be organized when Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica and all this had years. And we only had two, two years in training. So they didn't have confidence. But we were fortunate. We were successful. So successful that the trained, training officer came out we said there was a question sign by our name, four of us. And we wanted to know what happened. But we are out, we are down for promotion. And one thing I was pleased because, pleased of, when the report went to headquarters, the commanding officer called the entire battalion. And he came out, he said so. He said the St. Lucian in the Caribbean started training, having only two years training. And funny, we have two, four officers there, all four recommended for promotion. And everybody, that was the only time St. Lucia should be proud because we gained respect, a lot of respect from all Jamaica trained, all of them. And then, we were down to go to Japan as officers. And that's one thing St. Lucia has, should be proud of. From that, we gained a lot of respect. We were standing by. But the week they were supposed to call us to prepare, stand by, and to know, to, to form the different troops They told us that, in fact, that what they told us is that America dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. Mm. You can remember that. And then we, we, couldn't, we couldn't go into that action again. But we gained respect, and Russia should be proud. We were the least, because they thought we organized late, and we didn't have the type of training to go to war. And I'm proud of that. But nevertheless, we returned to St. Lucia. In fact, returned to St. Lucia here. We were well received in St. Lucia. And from there, we can see we were put in the place there and they were demobbed because headquarters was in Grenada after we left St. Lucia. And headquarters came back to receive us. And that's where they disbanded the battalion. After they disbanded the battalion, they offered us some land. Well, 
Some of us couldn't go, some of us joined the police force and so on. And some of the soldiers went to for farming. And they told us we want land to build. So anytime they get this piece of land, we will get the spot. Each of us will get a spot from the police force. But we were not fortunate because the land we got there, it was for, for, for the, the church took it. And it was not enough for them, the government to form what they wanted to. They wanted the piece of land strictly for the returned soldiers. But up to this moment, some of the fellows died and they didn't receive the land, inclu including my humble servant. But nevertheless, I say so that uh, uh, St. Lucia will know that there are about five or six of us who never received the, the piece of land we were entitled to. Mr. Cyril, but, Mr. Cyril yes, can I stop you there? Yes, please. First of all, I want to thank you so much oh, yes. again for sharing that wonderful story. I never get tired of hearing how you went across and you were there in Italy and you had to camp on Mount Vesuvius. I think it's an amazing story. Um, and just so I will let our, our the rest of the group know, you, you had a distinguished career post World War II in St. Lucia. You served for many years as St. Lucia's fire chief. You did a tremendous amount of work uh, and service in building up our, our mm -hmm. whole fire department as it exists today. And you are a very I know for sure that the police force and the fire force, the, the, the men of the fire service, men and women look up to you in high regard. In fact, I was even talking to a young lady in the prime minister's office and she was telling me how <clears throat> up to not so long ago, you were still driving and you went down there to visit her and you parked right behind the prime minister's car and boxed him <laughs> in. And um, you went up to meet with her and uh, and the police and the police were very accommodating and they said just send the keys down and we'll move the car if the prime minister has to go anyway so i just want to to share that little story with with everyone because your service your service is well well known and recognized by all the armed service personnel in st lucia and i just want to thank you so much again for that um, I think just on the side that your daughter, Simone, who's there with you, who's facilitated you with us today, and we're so thankful for her. Uh, I think she has to run off to her husband who's not so well at home. So oh. she's going to disconnect you from this, yeah. but leave your tablet on so you'll be able to follow along. Um, but I'm going to hand back over to Donald now, mm -hmm. um, and he's going to probably hand over to, to Mr. Jared. But even before that, I just wanted to mention about uh, Mrs. Collymore Woodstock, something that uh, Margaret alluded to is that her mother's service in, in Belgium uh, as a radar operator is something that um, I certainly want to, to delve into more. I don't have the information now, but I'm very, very keen to learn more about that aspect of her service because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that she would have been on the front lines during the Battle of the Bulge. Um, that's, that's my thinking in terms of her timing, uh, which was a very aggressive time <clears throat> when the Germans were using a lot of their buzz bombs and V1 rockets. And my sense is that Marguerite, um, is that uh, Miss Ina Collymore might have been very close to some very dangerous action. So that's something that I'm gonna be researching in the days ahead. And I hope to come back and report more fully on that and share that with Marguerite as we go along. But anyway, Donald, I've spoken enough, back to you. Um, Thank you, you very much, Nicholas. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. Debo. Yes. Thanks right. to the others. I, I was, yes. Thanks, Simon. I Thank must you. tell you all. Thank you, but it was certainly a pleasure hearing his story. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we're going to have to pause him there because we can't hear him and just move on. For the record, I just wanted to thank him very much. We can't hear you, Mr. Cyril. Um, for what a wonderful story and, and, and his memory is like, well, I'm, I'm saying it's better than mine, <laughs> you know, fantastic. And it's, uh, it's great to, to, to be able to, re to, to record it. And I'm sure futuristically, we can probably do more about that and, and, and make sure it's all recorded. Can't hear you now, Mr. Cyril, unfortunately, 
So we're going to have to uh, move on. But thank you very, very much. And, and again, a round of applause from everybody to really to, for such a wonderful, wonderful historical um, story. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Jarrett. Tell us something about your, um, your years of service um, in, the, in, 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 the, in the war. And, and, and uh, you know. Yeah. Yes, it, it's what I can tell you, Dan. It's, it's just wonderful listening to that gentleman. It's a pity that I, I didn't take it that much. I'll, I'll go that far to remember that much. But I think he's got a good memory and he does remember a lot. I don't. Mm -hmm. After the war, my pleasure, the pleasure I found was to just forget about everything and seek a new life. And the thing, and the thing about it, it was my intention to coming back to England. I, I was actually going to Canada. I was all, I had two places, too many places. I had to go to Canada because I want had my best, very best friend is a young man at the time, a young man at the time by the name of NQ, is a Canadian. And we were what you call real good pal with each other. In the, in the forces, we go on holiday together and wherever we are, whatever we do, we do it together. And he wanted me so much after we left the armed force to be in Canada. And I, it was, it, we had it all set up that I would be in Canada with him. But unfortunately, things didn't work out that way because after my schoolmate and my kid that I grew up with, who everyone think he was my brother, but he wasn't my blood brother. But the people in our era would say, oh, your brother is just gone there. He was named was Tim Murray. He didn't have the same ideas. I, he wanted to leave Jamaica immediately after I get back there. But I didn't want to because I had a good job working at the pier. And I couldn't take, I couldn't see him leaving Jamaica and leaving me behind. I got to give up my good job in Jamaica where I was earning a good, I was getting a good wage. And then I come back to England. When I get back to England, the situation had changed. It was like what we know when we were here, just a couple of years before in the war. The people who we were friendly with were the same people who were pulling the curtain aside to look at you what, going down the road as if they have never seen you before. That didn't bother, that didn't take, we didn't take much news of her because the immigrant, this immigration business. Mr. Jarrett, you've muted yourself. Unmute yourself, please. Um, yes. If you didn't have many people take it in a very serious manner, but if you want to do well and to do, go about just go about your own way. Do what you want. Find yourself a, a job. Go to your work, and then forget about the people. But it was a different, different life in England after the war done. Mm -hmm. After when we came back here, the very, very people who were your friend, they were the very people who were staring at you as if they have never seen you before. But mm -hmm. let me tell you. It's not every one of us that had worry, had any problem with that. My problem is, I, I married then, and have my kid to look after. And my my intention was a good standard of education for my my child. And I know this is a country where you could get it, and I'm so pleased today he's got it. He's a PhD. And I'm so proud of that for what the country have done for me there. I tell you, if I, many people have taken it so seriously that they, they, they actually fall out, they fell out because they take the, the, the nature of the situation that they are in, they take it so serious that they just couldn't take it. But if you just don't go about your own business, let, let the next pe people, they meet you and they, they get to you, they want to put their hand in your, their hand in your hair to find out what your hair is like and everything. Forget about that, forget that, they're done. You are the same, look, I'm glad your color is different. Forget about that. And just go about your own business. And that was what I did just done. And 
I had no regret to my time that I spent in this country because to be from this country have done quite a lot for me. I am telling you. And this country have done quite a lot for me. I got some very intelligent children and grandchildren. Actually, the all of my generation up that follows me are university graduates. And I'm so pleased of that. Today then, it's a pleasure listening to that gentleman. The thing about it, he's so serious, and the way he was he's so serious with it. And what the, the thing about it, I felt so happy about it. And you know what happened? I wish I could be always in touch with him, with them both, and the lady. And I do not want them to go, and I don't know how am I going to get in touch with them after this meeting. I want to. So, in, so I just want you to organize it for me. So, All right, great. I wanted to before to find people who give their service to this country in the during the time of the great conflict, during the war, that I could because I actually never know of any around here, and it's wonderful meeting them on this computer today, Don. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mr. Jarrett. And I, want to, and I want to be able to keep in touch with them. All but right. My, my, wife, my wife and I will always get on them and say to them, how are you? Have, we have a chat and so on. It's what we wanted. All right, great. Well, we'll do our best, Nicholas and I, to, to make sure that we make links with all of everyone that's here and indeed try and get other people in the world. May I just say also that when Mr. Jarrett was talking about just a little bit of history about Mr. Jarrett. When he's talking about being employed in, 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 in Kingston in Jamaica, Mr. Jarrett actually witnessed every one of the members of the Windrush. The Windrush. Boarded the ship. Now, I don't know of anybody else that's alive that can say that. You know, he witnessed every, every passenger board the ship going back, go to England. And, and that was my that was my job only job in Jamaica working on the pier. Yeah. And that was my only job I had I had before. Yeah. And I, um at, at, at my very my uh, I had relations like my very best cousin, one of my good cousins boarded that ship. And I was at work and the, when the wind rushed up on the pier on the, on the pier one. Because it's where I work and I see mm -hmm. Every one of the, and I was surprised that when I came, when I came here and find the situation that I left when I was in the Air Force, I left here and went back to Jamaica and had my debab, came back here and find the situation have changed. Mm. Okay, so thank you very much. I mean, we have to sum up now, and because you know we are respecting your respective ages and we don't want to keep you too long this i want to be in touch with them sorry i want to be in touch with them yes we'll we'll work that out we'll we'll yes. certainly work that out and i'm sure everybody wants to stay in touch with each other uh, I, I just want to say a massive thank you and i have to say that it was all started um with with, with nicholas and his story of his father's wonderful project wonderful story wonderful wonderful oh. nicholas and, and I'm sure the journey virtually has just begun. And um, we, we will uh, make sure that we all link and anybody who can link with further links in terms of veterans, please let's do it and let's make the family a bigger one and yes. better, all right? Now I'm gonna say back to anybody who wants to go back to, 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 to Ina, Margarita, and, and if you want to say a few, you're still muted. You're still muted. A big one? You're muted. Um, no, sorry. No, I'm not, no, no, I'm not, not, not you, Mr. Jarrett. No, I'm not muting. No, no, not you, Mr. Jarrett. What's coming? I'm, I'm going back to Jamaica now. Back to Mr. In, in Just a summary. Oh. They're, they're in Barbados. Um, oh, Barbados. So. Sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, Jamaicans in Barbados. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, Jamaicans in Surrey. I had some workmen. I was trying to get them to stop with the noise. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yes, definitely a pleasure. We'd be happy to see you again, Mr. Jarrett. I'm, I'm sure, sure going to want to see you again. You know, ask him to stop. You know, you know, I'm looking at you and I'm looking at your mother with that 
open teeth. I had the, I had the same thing when I had my natural teeth. <laughs> we both we both have it. Yes, yeah, but, and I had it when I was a kid before I lost my my natural my teeth. I'm sure. a, yes. I, I, I do think apart from that, uh, it, it raises a lot of interesting issues. Uh, Mr. Haynes mentioned about the land that they were promised. Uh, one issue that I have to look into is that mom's pension uh, has changed um, the government, which I think rather unfairly, tying it now to the Jamaican dollar, which as you know, is completely, um, mm. has, has little or no value. So there are some, um, there are some issues that perhaps uh, as veterans can be looked at. And it's also another important aspect I think of telling the story is that you tend to seem to have a negative view now of West Indians who have come to the UK and, and, and those now being deported or as if you've taken advantage of the country. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's important to share the story that they have made a contribution yeah. and not only those that stayed in England, but a lot of those that came back to the West Indies and um, really formed, helped form and shape yeah. the West Indies in the 1950s and 60s. Yes. Some of them, many of them becoming prime ministers and leaders in their country. So I think there was a, a, a good exchange. Yes. Uh, certainly mom got the opportunity to study as a barrister because of the war, but she yes. also did. Yes, that's country. right. Yeah. Um, so I think all of that contributes to the story. Absolutely yeah. excellent. And it's such a fantastic story. And I have to go back to the fact that we now um, plan to put up a monument in the National Memorial Arbor region, which is UK's living center of remembrance. It has over 400 monuments and memorials there, covering all Commonwealth countries. Uh, yeah. So um, as Caribbean people, we are missing from there. So we yes. say there's a there's a chapter that's not been written. It's missing from the book of history, which is us. So therefore, we are aiming to put that chapter right by putting up this monument in recognition of you all, yes. the present yes. and the future. Okay. Yes. Bye-bye, Mom. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So thank you very much, one and all. It's thank absolutely fantastic. Much. And uh, Nicholas, super. We'll talk. Mr. Thank Haynes. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Haynes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Mr. Jarrett. Thank you very much. Thank you, Margaret. Much. Thank you so all much. Right. Margaret. The pleasure of meeting you, Nick. Okay. Same, same here, Mrs. Okay. We, we'll, we'll do this another time. I will yeah. send the recording. And you can have a look, and I'm sure yeah. things will be we'll fine. We'll make sure we'll edit it so that it's yes. it's yes. it's and, done. and we'll share it. We'll All share right. It thank, you very thank, you so thank you very much. Thank you so much. Lovely day. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. I'm gonna end the meeting now. Thank you. I just want to be always connected with these people. Excellent. We will do that. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.